I think that we've got everything that we're looking for here in the Yukon because we want adventure, we want the hard miles, we want to earn it. And you have to earn it. That's why we love it. If you walked out the door and you got something, you know, straight away, then it wouldn't be a challenge and we'd be doing something else. It's getting out and suffering because I think the animals deserve to suffer. You have to earn to be able to harvest an animal, in my opinion. And I think we earn them. So it's the middle of October, the lakes are freezing, and we're hunting moose. Is anybody else out moose hunting right now? Not if they've been luckier than us. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get up high. We're just starting to get into the mountains. We're running machines on this hunt because where we're going, I don't know that there's many people that would ever remotely think about packing a moose out for where we're heading. We just have to get there. Sweet. And you're the shooter. Can't wait. How do you feel about hunting moose in October? Well, we won't be busy out there. We won't have to contend with a lot of other hunters because they're home warming their feet by the fire. Because <laughs> winter is coming winter. in the Yukon. Yeah, let's do it. Coming this far into the bush, going through these draws, going across these hills, it's a huge story of the hunt and, and I know I can almost feel it as we we're traveling and building this story of the hunt in my mind and it's an awesome feeling and that's you know a big part for me with the wilderness hunting, the adventure stuff that we do. I get home and I get to tell this story and it's a long story and it starts with the journey in. That's always you know one of the biggest parts of the hunt. I think that we've done, for the most part, the hardest miles because the next half is a little bit more open country. We've been traveling certainly the last number of hours on a trapping trail, but a trapping trail in the winter time is far different than a trapping trail in the fall time. We've made it through, through everything that we've run into. But yeah, we'll get up in there tomorrow and yeah, I'm just hoping to, hoping to see those moose in the high country. It's full on winter up here. You know, we started making our way and we are now up exactly where I wanted to get to. A lot of snow <laughs> and it's supposed to snow for the next few days. So I'm really hoping that we don't get a major accumulation because it'll be a little bit more challenging if we do. We're here though, it's great moose country. You know, up high, all these moose will be coming up out of the valleys. And if it clears and we can see, then the hunt will be on. We're gonna set up camp, find a decent spot to camp. You know, up here in the wind, it's not gonna be amazing, but it doesn't really matter because we're in a great moose country and this is what we're here for. Well, how do you guys feel about this spot? So we are fully exposed up here, like just this high plateau stuff. And unless you drop way down into the valley, which we're not gonna do, because this is where the moose are. This is where we're gonna see them from. Exactly. I'll grab the saw and we'll just make a fire spot in amongst those trees. Let's get to building camp. It's nothing flat. From up here, we can see lots of country to glass for moose. So we're gonna give it some time, do some glassing, see if they come out a bit. Maybe the snow is gonna lift and we'll have a better view. But right now, we're just putting in the time. There's no need to move from this location with the moose you know, moving around the trees, in and out of the timber. They can appear out of nowhere. So we just gotta keep glassing hard and, and I'm pretty optimistic that something's gonna pop out. We haven't been up here 20 minutes and spotted our first moose. It's a small bull. It's just down in the bottom there, about 300 yards away. That's pretty awesome when you can see that, especially in this weather. I think we're in the great spot. It's just a matter of, you know, things clearing up a little bit. And uh, I think that more moose will come out of the woodwork.
we used uh, most of the fuel in the machines on the way up here, so we're gonna top them up and, and be ready to go. You know, we can find a good moose here any minute. This is about as good a spot as any around here because we don't wanna drop down into the valley so that, you know, we have less exposed, so a more comfortable time down in the valley, but don't wanna waste the time going up and down to get to this spot because this is an amazing glassing spot. We're not here for luxury. We've got a goal and that's to get Carl a moose. These trees are gonna give us a, a great break and so we're just gonna clear out the brush out of this area. So I've got this map here and it's a lot handier than just a GPS. I can see the contours in better detail than I can just looking at the ground. So I can see behind this flat where it drops down, I can see that there's a river there and that the terrain looks gentle enough that we can use the machines through there no problem. We can still see some of these willow flats on you know all of the mountains around and then this below us is just tremendous this is more like traveling country below us because there's not really any of that feed it's just that buck brush which they'll travel back and forth between you know this mountain to that mountain into the willow draws that's my theory anyways yeah they could be popping out anytime yeah it looks nice and flat but we know it's not Coming in here without much of a trail at all and really navigating largely by instinct, you know, really having to keep track of where we are the whole time. That's a huge part of, of making this a real adventure. Well, especially when navigation, like you couldn't see the mountains coming in this morning. That made it a little more challenging. You know, we're not just a couple kilometers from the parking lot here. You know, this is in and of itself, you know, not even hunting moose, not even getting a moose. This is a, this is a pretty sweet trip to be out here. Sometimes when you're exploring new country, there are no trails. My theory is when you spread it out, you know, try to move to those less impact areas as much as you can, but still, you know, explore and get out there. And that's kind of what this hunt is about in late season. Like it's exploring, it's pushing your limits. Home sweet home. Yeah, let's hit the glass. We'll just set up down here and hopefully these clouds lift a bit but we should be able to see up in all these willow draws. Let's go find a moose. Looks like good country. I think we'll be able to call a moose in this late in the season. The call will certainly stop something but as far as calling them right in I think it'd be probably about a 25% chance. I'm thinking at this point, we're gonna find groups kind of up in those willow draws. And it'll be more spot and stock. That willow is so high in some of those draws, eh? Man, it can hide moose so easily. Well, Carl spotted a bull and a cow. Really tough to tell. So we've got the moose, the bull, and the cow over here behind me uh, at the base of this peak. And I'm just checking the map here to see, you know, whether we can actually get there because in this country there could be gullies, canyons, big steep hills that we won't get the machines down or back up again. So it looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look really easy, but I think we could pick our way across there. Well, on first glance, it looks pretty decent. So Greg's got a good look at this moose and he looks pretty good. I'm gonna go take a look at this body scope and uh, sounds like we're gonna make a move here. Right now we're just waiting for this snow to clear out so we can get a good look at that bull. It's looking good. I think it looks pretty good, you know, from what I can see. It's the first really mature bull we've seen, so. But you're gonna have to make the call because you're the one pulling the trigger. <laughs> so I'll get out of the way. Can't see his head at all, he's, his head's right behind the tree. Oh yeah, so much snow, it's a long way away. It's probably like three, three and a half miles. Let's do it. Let's pack up and get moving. How awesome is that? Perfect. Good spot. Yeah, we're done. We better unload that wood. Well, because we're going to need something to cook tenderloins on tonight. That's right. Man, it's beautiful out now. Look at that. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty excited right now. The sun's coming out, you know, it's early in the day. We got lots of time. Let's hit the road here and track them down.